Hello everyone, and you're on the K-Course channel. After receiving many requests, in this video I decided to go over the most common mistakes when working with ice malt. I will explain why the mass remains cloudy, why ice malt yellows, and why decor becomes sticky. These are mistakes that we ourselves have made, and beginners often face. I hope that this video will help you and make your work as easy as possible. So the first mistake is using the wrong cookware for melting ice malt. The cookware in which you melt ice malt must have a thick bottom. In such cookware, heat accumulates gradually and is evenly distributed over the entire surface. Cookware with a thin bottom heats unevenly, making the ice malt burn. Before starting work, make sure that the saucepan really is clean and dry. Even traces of tap water can cloud the ice malt. So wipe it dry with a good absorbent towel. The second mistake is using low quality or improperly selected ice malt. We always work with Benio ice malt. This brand of ice malt withstands high temperatures, is easy to work with, and produces transparent glass-like lollipops. This is not an advertisement, but we would happily collaborate with well-known confectionery brands. We came to work with the ice malt we use now through trial and error. Working with other brands of ice malt was much more difficult. If Benio ice malt is not found in your city, remember the following tips. First, choose granulated ice malt. Powdered ice malt has a lower boiling point and therefore overheats and yellows faster. Ice malt has a wide range of applications, so make sure the ice malt you choose is suitable for making lollipops. Usually this information can be found on the manufacturer's official website. Third, don't buy a large amount of ice malt at once. It's better to purchase several small packages, test them, and choose the one you like best. The third mistake is selecting the wrong cooking temperature. When melting ice malt, you can encounter two main problems, burning the mass and overheating it. Remember to melt ice malt over medium heat. If melted over low heat, the process will take longer and the mass will overheat and turn yellow. If melted over high heat, the mass may burn. Even if the ice malt starts to burn in one spot, which is usually at the edges or on the walls of the saucepan, the mass will no longer be transparent. Keep in mind that only you can select the right mode for your stove. All stoves are different, which is why I can't say which setting will work for you. However, I can give you some tips. The first is if you have a gas or electric stove, use a burner that's the same diameter as the bottom of your saucepan. The flame from a gas stove should not heat the sides of the pot. The second tip is to keep a close eye on the ice malt as it starts to melt on the edges. From this point on, you can start stirring it gently so that the mass melts evenly without overheating. The third tip is to collect any granules that remain on the sides of the pot so that they melt and don't start to burn. The fourth tip is to reduce the heat and remove the pot from the stove immediately if the ice malt starts to smoke. If it's taking too long to boil, increase the heat. The fifth tip, since a pot with a thick bottom will continue to heat the ice malt even after being removed from the stove, if you're afraid that the ice malt will overheat and turn yellow, briefly place the pot in cold water. Be careful though not to let any water get into the ice malt. It's enough to just submerge the bottom of the pot. The fourth mistake is not bringing the ice malt to boiling temperature. Once all the granules have melted, take a thermometer and measure the temperature. Bring the ice malt to a boiling temperature of 180 to 190 degrees Celsius and let it boil for a few seconds. Note that different brands of ice malt may have different boiling temperatures. If it's not brought to a boil, the mass might remain cloudy since not all the ice malt granules will dissolve. The boiling temperature is also necessary for all excess moisture to evaporate. Now let's discuss the fifth mistake, though it's not really a mistake, just a major problem for many cake bakers, humidity. Humidity has a negative effect on ice malt, causing decor to become cloudy, sticky, to melt, or develop a sugary crust. Ice malt decor begins to absorb moisture from the air only when it's cooled down to 30 degrees Celsius or lower. Moisture cannot penetrate it while its temperature is above this mark, so you need to take preventive measures when the decor has already hardened and holds its shape but is still warm. If you pack the decor later, it may have already absorbed some moisture and then no protection will help. The easiest way to protect the decor is to pack it in an airtight container or bag. Store all decor at room temperature, away from light and heat sources. If you store it in the refrigerator, the decor will become wet. We have a basic course on ice malt that consists of seven lessons and is very affordable and easy to understand. It solves many problems that beginner cake bakers encounter. 
and we thoroughly cover the four ways to protect ice malt from moisture and how to properly store it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of our new videos. Bye bye for now. See you soon.